But first, tonight's top story. The INLA has said it has put all its weapons beyond use and will now concentrate on politics as the way forward. That announcement came this morning. Then this afternoon it was revealed the breakaway faction of the UDA in South East Antrim has also disposed of its arsenal. Both moves come just hours before the amnesty for giving out weapons runs out tomorrow. Niall Donnelly reports. <laughs> The INLA was formed in 1974. A ruthless Republican terror group, it killed around 120 people. Among its victims were 17 people murdered in a bomb at the Droppenwell pub in Ballykelly in 1982. Eleven of them were soldiers. In 1979, they hit the world headlines with the murder of Conservative Northern Ireland spokesman Ernie Neve. And in 1997, the INLA shot dead LVF leader Billy Wright at the Mays prison. The INLA were no strangers to bitter feuding and often ruthlessly shot dead their own members. Twelve years ago they announced a ceasefire and last October said they renounced violence. Then, at a news conference this morning, they said they had put all their weapons beyond use. We are more satisfied that the INLA have put all their weapons beyond use. That consisted of rifles, handguns and explosives. We're not going to the actual numbers, but it's been substantial. Unlike other paramilitary groups, the INLA did not hand their weapons directly to General John de Chastelin's decommissioning commission. Instead, they had discussions with and gave the weapons to what's called a joint facilitation group, who then transferred them to the General's commission. Okay, there's no doubt whatsoever that they put all the weapons to be use. How did you do that? Well, we were part, and this wasn't just a one-off thing, we were part of a process that had been ongoing for a long time. And we uh, built up enough confidence, and the other point about it is that uh, we do, we built up a trust with people, and we do know that they went through a very rigorous collection process throughout all parts of Ireland, on both sides of the border, uh, to, make, to ensure that all weapons were being brought to a central point for destruction. We're quite confident that happened. In Bally Kelly today, so many years on from that INLA bombing, one councillor says the terrorists did not manage to split the community. And he says many will view today's announcement by the INLA as cynical. You ask any of the people, relatives who were blown up at the drop and well, or at Darkley, or Airy Neve's widow, what they think of it. This peace doesn't bring any peace of mind to them. They are still grieving. Uh, in fact, some of them so bad that they wouldn't even talk to you today. They think this is a very cynical move, and I would hope I was speaking on their behalf. General de Chastelin's commission has issued a statement confirming the decommissioning took place. The commission has also said it's been engaged with the official IRA and the decommissioning process has been concluded. And this afternoon the Prime Minister announced in the Commons that the breakaway South East Antrim Brigade of the UDA, which also has a bloody history, has got rid of its weapons. All this decommissioning comes ahead of tomorrow's deadline when the amnesty for giving up weapons runs out. After tomorrow, any guns which have not been handed in can be forensically tested and people prosecuted if evidence is found, linking them to paramilitary attacks or murders. Niall Donnelly, UTV Live, Belfast.